And we're going to go on to David T. Okay, David. Can you hear me? On. Yep, now I can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm on your email list. In fact, it was through you I learned about the death of Ron Cummins from the Organic Consumers Association before I learned it from them directly. That being said, I hope you also correspond with Dr. Zach Bush and also with Ocean Robbins in your campaign and your efforts. Um, but anyway, as to my questions, you had talked about mosquitoes, I believe, in Florida being genetically modified, as I recall. I was curious to know what the status of that was. Also, I think you were the one who talked about how GMO salmon from Canada I don't know if it was farm raised or whatever, and whether what the status of that was in terms of interacting with other salmon. And then finally, I was wondering if your organization ever looked at supplements that claim to help the body rid itself of glyphosate. Yes, mosquitoes, supplements, and glyphosate um, elimination. All right. Yeah, I have. Um, let's start with the last one. So I, a lot of people ask me, what can you do besides uh, avoiding GMOs and Roundup? And for years, I would say it's above my pay grade. I'm not a scientist or a doctor, but I started speaking to doctors and scientists that were developing protocols. So I created a program called Healing from GMOs and Roundup and interviewed 18 doctors, including Zach Bush um, and Kieran Krishnan and Joe Mercola and and Dietrich Klinghardt and Lee Cowden and a bunch of others. And um, they each have their own ways to detox. And there are certain products that uh, have had have shown some reductions. There's a Purium Biomedic, which showed a dramatic reduction in glyphosate in the urine, but it was a very small human sample. So it's hard to draw general conclusions. Zach Bush is um, Ion Biome showed a 20-something percent decrease in glyphosate in the urine. Um, there's a program, there's a product at BiotaQuest that supposedly degrades it, but in a pathway that doesn't produce AMPA, which is the normal degraded version of glyphosate, which is more toxic. Um, there's um, uh, apple cider vinegar has an enzyme in there, which is supposed to break down glyphosate. Um, sauerkraut juice, it was fed to cows and it reduced the glyphosate in their urine in a European study. A lot of these are in this healing from GMOs and Roundup um, course. And uh, if you sign up for the IRT newsletter, um, we'll announce that the course is currently taken down briefly, but it'll go up very soon. Um, again, for people that would like that. Um, as far as the uh, supplements, uh, no, the, the um, mosquitoes, I want to mute you, David. Um, the Oxitec did this whole big release, second release, with a new generation of mosquitoes and never re reported the results and asked for permission to release even more in Florida and in California. So I don't have the current up-to-date status whether it's actually been released in California, but they did get approval by the feds and now they need approval on a county by county basis in California. So it's it's disastrous. So I was talking to um, a person who works for Oxitec, uh, Eric, Derek Nemo, who was a senior scientist there. And we were both in the Florida Keys in 2014, testifying to the Mosquito Control Board, trying to get them, I was trying to get them to not approve the mosquito. And he was trying to get them to approve the mosquito. But he and I talked during the lobby. And I, first of all, I said to him, you're, you're changing the genome permanently. And you shouldn't be doing this. It's very dangerous. And he goes, oh, no, no, no. They won't survive in the, in the uh, environment. Um, under normal circumstances, they said their survival rate, they originally said they'd all die. They were lying. They knew they were lying, but they lied. They lied a lot. And they will find, oh yeah, maybe 3% will survive. 
Well, that's a lot if you're releasing a billion mosquitoes. But in the presence of, of an antibiotic, then um, tetracycline, then it survives because that's used as part of the process to keep some alive so that they can mate. So in the, in the presence of tetracycline, which is found in cat food, it's found in, in rivers, et cetera, et cetera, the survival rate can go up to 18%. So I was explained to him that it's impossible to, to make that guarantee that you're not going to change the gene pool, but he was sure of it. Well, they released millions upon millions, probably billions of mosquitoes in Brazil. And three years later, uh, some researchers went there independently and found, in fact, that there was a completely new type of mosquito that had never been part of the gene pool that had genes from the genetically engineered mosquitoes and genes from the natural mosquitoes. And they didn't know whether it was more dangerous or less dangerous, whether it was harder to kill or easier to kill. The reason why they were genetically engineering mosquitoes was to reduce the population of the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which carries Zika and dengue fever and chikungunya, uh, which is another disease. And they released it in five countries now. And there's absolutely no evidence that it works. In fact, where they've done tests in the, of the population, there hasn't been a reduction. And it's interesting that they want to release it in California to reduce the incidence of these diseases. In the last five or 10 years, there hasn't been a single California-born disease from these mosquitoes. There's been a few hundred from people that got, got it in another state and came back, but it, the, the problem doesn't exist here. And yet they're going to risk the population. How are they going to risk the population? Or well, I asked Derek Nemo, I said, Derek, have you tested the saliva of the biting female mosquitoes that you're creating? Because he told us that, you know, there'd be no female mosquito mosquitoes created, but they turns out there was plenty of female mosquitoes. They're the ones that bite. And they finally acknowledged that. Another one of their lies that they had to admit was not true. And I asked him, have you ever tested the saliva? Because the saliva gets into our bloodstream. And I'll never forget his answer. Well, he, he, he said, first of all, we're, we're just now testing to see if the protein that's produced by the inserted gene is expressed in the saliva. Because they put a gene in, it produces a protein, kills off offspring, makes them sterile. And they were, they were going to see if that protein ended up inside human blood, see if it was in the saliva. I said, Derek, the process of genetic engineering creates massive collateral damage in the genome. In a human cell, when they added one gene, up to 5% of the functioning genes changed their levels of expression. Some were shut off, some were turned on, others got more or less proteins than they were, plant than they were producing before. Shouldn't you be testing the entire composition of the saliva and not just for one protein? He said, good idea. <laughs> so this, they had already released millions in four countries by the time I was speaking with him. So these people should not be in charge of the gene pool, which brings us back to GMO 2.0, where we're giving CRISPR kits to virtually anyone who can create virtually anything, and there's no requirement for testing for most of the, G of the gene edited GMOs, so you can create your own insects, you can create your own grasses and trees and animals and fish that glow in the dark and microbes, unless we stop this irresponsible deregulation. Now you also asked about salmon. Um, there's salmon that have genes from a different salmon and an Arctic eel uh, that cause it to produce growth hormones throughout the year. Normally it's just for six months or so. Uh, but, and then they have a resting period, but these are like always growing, growing, growing. And they grow very quickly. And so they get to market earlier. And when this Oxitec did studies to prove it was safe, they were ridiculous studies using like six fish. So few that the statistical significance, even when there was a 50% increase or a 
25% increase in either the allergenicity or a cancer promoting hormone, it wasn't statistically significant. So I think the stuff may be very dangerous, but we can't verify. And yet they have approval to make it and sell it in the United States. Now, there's a similar salmon that was created by Canadian researchers, and they were genetically engineered to go faster, to grow faster. And they were put into tanks with other frankenfish or with natural fish. And when they had enough food, everything was fine. When they reduced the food, then the frankenfish freaked because they're growing so fast, they're voraciously hungry. And they became aggressive and they killed and ate and destroyed the other fish in the tank. So they had um, population crashes or total extinctions in the tanks. So if these fish get out in the ocean, they could be, have a horrible influence. So I don't know if the, I think there's some genetically engineered salmon that have been released in the United States already. It's unlabeled because it goes out through restaurants and catering organizations. And there's been some also like that in Canada, but um, it hasn't been large production yet.